Welcome 4K to another week of art in the uh, classroom or coming to you from the art classroom. Um, this week, we are going to be talking a little bit more about cutting. And I know that last week was probably um, kind of difficult going around those shapes. Um, today, we're going to focus on straight lines, but lots of them. Um, and with an end goal or uh, in hopes of making our own puzzle. So um, we're going to talk about that and I'll show you how we are going to create that. And just so that you have um, this knowledge, you can take any picture that you make at home. So if you have paper, um, you could make a picture and you could cut it up into pieces and then piece it back together, making your own puzzle. So um, we're going to be working with one that I found um, and um, to show you that, let's go upside down and bring it down. All right. So I have a picture here, um, which shows you, um, obviously, your ABCs all the way um, with pictures of not only capitals, but lowercase and then um, an image that goes along with that letter. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut on these outside black lines and then i'm going to show you um, how you're going to cut this into your own puzzle so the first thing uh, i'm not going to explain too much about scissors um, put my thumb in the small hole other fingers and the others and then the biggest thing here is knowing that i don't want to start by cutting close to my hand so my finger is here I want to hold the paper with my thumb on top, my thumb on top with the scissors, but I want to start away from my um, hand that's holding the paper. So that would be all the way over here. So I am cutting on the outside edge of that black line. And when I get to the top of the paper, instead of turning my scissors, um, which I never want to do, I always want to turn the paper, I'm going to go all the way off, okay? which leaves me a little piece of paper there. I am then going to take it and I'm going to turn my paper and I'm gonna cut till I get to the edge of that square. And just like I did with the last one, I'm gonna keep going all the way off. So I have these pieces that just fold. Turn the paper again, moving my hand once again and cutting on the outside edge of that black square. All right, and the last one. All right, so now we have a scrap pile, and then what we're going to be making our puzzle. The scrap pile we need to get rid of right away because we don't want those pieces to get mixed up. And then what we're going to do is we're going to need a pencil and we're going to flip over our puzzle. <clears throat> All right. And I picked this one on purpose because when I was making um, the puzzles, I made some mistakes um, in sizing these up. And so I'm going to explain what we're going to do with this if that happens. All right. So using a pencil, the first thing I want everyone to do is you're going to write the first letter of your first name. So my name is Matt. Um, and so I'm going to write an M and I'm going to do it below each of my numbers. All right. So these are going to become all different pieces of our puzzle. All right. And so I have numbered them so that it's a two sided puzzle, meaning we could try to put this together even on this side. But the reason we're putting in our uh, first letter of our first name is we all have different handwriting. And this way, if I drop a puzzle piece, um, your teacher has a better chance of getting you that piece back. So double check that you wrote first letter of your first name under each one. Julie Gates, please stop by the office when you get a chance. Julie Gates, please stop by the office. And that is proof that I make these videos at school. Um, so make sure that you have all of these, um, your first letter of your first name underneath all the numbers. And now if you have any of the, your sides that look like this, this line, this thicker black line 
we're going to try to imagine that it's not there. All right. We're going to pretend that it's not there. So what I want you to do is um, you can raise your hand. Maybe your teacher will come over and we'll extend those lines. So when you see this top line here, that thick black line, and then this one here, that's the only line I'm not going to cut. So I'll explain that now. So the first line that we want to cut has to be one that goes all the way off the paper. So it could be this one, it could be this one, and it could be this one. The reason we wouldn't want to cut this one is because it doesn't go all the way across and we'd have to stop right there and then figure out what to do. All right, so I'm gonna pick this one here. Um, and so I'm holding my paper and I'm going to cut from one side all the way up, okay? Now, again, Mr. Lonzak made some mistakes. Um, and so this thick black line, we're gonna pretend it's not there. So I'm gonna hold this piece of paper. I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna cut this piece. I'm gonna hold here and cut this piece. So this is one of my first pieces that I have cut out. I'm gonna pretend that one line's not there. I'm gonna cut all the way across here. So that's a piece, this is a piece. Holding it there. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense. Again, you can always ask an adult. So I picked this line now for the next one that because it goes from one side all the way across and it kind of splits um, one big section into two big sections. Okay, so doing a nice job of cutting slow, trying to stay right on that line. Your puzzle will be really nice if you have nice cut lines. So that's why we made them straight, making it a little bit easier. All right, so there's one piece. Now I turn it, always cutting, looking down a line. I never want to turn my hand and cut across my body. I always want to turn and cut this way. All right, almost done. Right. And then always making sure that I only have one number on each piece of paper. So this one has two, which means I left one line I still need to cut. All right. So now you have all these pieces and you could do it on the side with the numbers or you could flip it over. You got to do it carefully. You could flip it over. And whenever I start a puzzle, I like to spread them all out so I can see the whole puzzle. Uh, or all of the puzzle pieces, I mean, in their entirety. So now I have them all out. And I have a sheet that looks like this that's meant to help you put your puzzle back together. So now you know kind of what it's supposed to look like. All right, it might be a different color, but it'll help you figure out what it's supposed to look like. So we have A for apple up here, and then it says E, and then I could go this way across, or I could come down the edge. Remember, you're always looking for that thick black line around the outside, and so if I look at this picture, it goes A, E, H, and then if I look L, P, and then T, and a W. So now I have a T and a W. Going across, we all know hopefully our alphabet. So it goes A, B, C, and then the last one is D. Okay. And so this is where it kind of gets hard because we want to kind of turn this, but we know that this goes up in the corner. So we got to find what happens inside of here. And if we look at our picture, we need a C and a G. to create 
than this. Okay, underneath the dog are grapes. Well, I found one that has our grapes. Tractor here. This has our elephant up in the top corner. We can already kind of see the shape that's going to go here. This one has part of pineapple, and we see pineapple there, so we know this one goes in there. And you got to be kind of gentle. goes here and finishes the nose and then we have this piece this piece and then the last little piece All right so moving that down piecing it all back together we have our finished puzzle, all right? So I hope that goes well for all of you. Good luck. Again, you could also put it together using this picture um, and trying to put it together looking at where the 12 goes, where the 13 goes. And if you get really good, you can put this whole thing together without using this piece of paper. All right, good luck everyone.